Hello YouTube, it is me again and welcome back to part 6 of this series on how to use the CRP5. Thanks for joining me. Now today's video is probably going to be the shortest video I've done on this series so far because all I'm actually going to do is just add a single level of complexity back onto what we did in part 5. Now if you've seen part 5 you'll know that that was all to do with how to calculate the true airspeed by knowing the pressure altitude, the temperature and the calibrated airspeed. We're going to do exactly the same today with one slight difference. In the previous video you may not have been aware, and you probably weren't, but the true airspeeds that I ended up calculating were very low. From memory they were around about 130 to 150 knots. And if you end up with a true airspeed calculation on the CRP5 that is less than 300 knots, you don't have to worry about anything you read off your answer and that's it, end of story, move on. However, if you end up calculating a true airspeed over 300 knots, you have to do something to it. You have to do what we call compressibility correction. It's a subtractive correction that you need to make to the true airspeed at high speeds because of the fact that the true airspeed being measured is slightly inaccurate and that's because there's an error caused by the fact that the air is being compressed into the pitot tube and therefore there's an overreading of the airspeed which you need to correct for. It's a very very simple correction and we're going to be using this window over here which you can see on the left hand side and it's written as comp core and that means compressibility correction and it's very simple to use and I'm going to give you two examples um, and then after that I've got um, part 7 that you may be interested in which is all to do with how to calculate Mach numbers and the speed of sound. So let me give you two fairly simple examples of how to work out compressibility correction. The first one we're going to say we're at flight level 350 with an outside air temperature of minus 30 degrees Celsius and the calibrated airspeed is 260 knots. What is your true airspeed? Well what we're going to do, uh, I might have to turn this upside down, let's just flip that. So now I've got flight level 350, so remember your pressure altitudes are inside the airspeed window, so there's 350. The temperature is minus 30, so I'm going to line up, oh there you go, it's almost perfect minus 30, note again remember that minus is to the left plus is to the uh, correction, minus is to the right and plus is to the left so 35,000 feet pressure altitude or flight level 350 outside air temperature of minus 30 with a CAS of 260 knots so if I move this round to 260 on the inner scale you can see that our true airspeed on the outer scale reads 450, 60, 70, 80 it's about 483 there or thereabouts. Now this is where the compressibility correction comes in. Because we've calculated the true airspeed which is over 300 knots we now need to use this window down here. I'm going to flip this upside down so we can read it. Now you'll see that although it doesn't actually show it on this digital version, on your version of the CRP5 you'll see this is actually an equation. It says true airspeed divided by 100 minus 3 divisions and it's very very simple to use you take your true airspeed, which in our case we said was about 483 knots, 483 divided by 100, which is 4.83, minus 3 is about 1.83, so just under 2. And what we need to do is we need to move the whole inner scale to the left following the direction of this arrow by 2 divisions, or 1.8 divisions. So each one of these is obviously a division, and we're going to move this about two to the left, which is going to probably move me almost to exactly where that mark is there. That's that's probably about two divisions, or 1.8 divisions. Now we go back to our calibrated airspeed, I'm just going to flip that round again, of 260 knots. And we read off our final true airspeed, which is now 465 knots. So there you go, we've, com we've corrected for the compressibility from 483 down to 465. That has now been corrected, there are no errors, that's our final answer. Okay, so now let's do another example. Uh, this time we're going to do flight level 170, so that's 17,000 feet, uh, with an outside air temperature of minus 10 and a calibrated airspeed of 300 knots. So flight level 170, again in a scale. So 17 is going to be just here. And the temperature is minus 10. So there's our minus 10. If 
flight level 170 is right there. There we go. And the calibrated airspeed is 300 knots. So the calibrated airspeed is there, 300 on the inner scale. And we're reading off 395 knots TAS on the outer. Now again, it's uncorrected at the moment. It's over 300, so we need to correct it. Again, we're going to use this compressibility correction window. So the true airspeed is currently 395 knots. So following this equation, 395 divided by 100 is uh, 3.95 minus 3 is just 0.95 call it 1 and we need to move this one division to the left it's a very small change on this example so it's on about 56 at the minute so we're going to move it just to about 57 okay these numbers have no meaning either from what I'm aware I don't know what they actually stand for no one does that I've spoken to anyway if you know put it in the comments let me know I'd love to know so we've moved that across now, so all we have to do is go back to our calibrated airspeed of 300 knots and you'll see that corrected true airspeed has now gone down from 395 to 390 knots. It's a small difference but it's something that you need to take into account, especially if you're doing time calculations or fuel burn calculations. Knowing your speed is very very important. Now one thing I will tell you is that in theory you're supposed to carry out the compressibility correction for any speed above 300 knots, any true airspeed above 300 knots. I will just say that realistically anything between 300 and 350 the difference is absolutely minuscule. It's a couple of knots if that, sometimes not even that, it's about half a knot. Um, the higher you go above 350, specifically anything over 400, you then end up with quite a significant difference and anything over 500 is much much bigger still. Um, but either way, in theory, just be advised that if you are preparing for your ATPL exams, uh, you will find that there are some questions whereby in your multiple choice answers, the CAA will give you the option of both the corrected answer, the uncorrected answer. They'll also assume that you've put in a positive temperature instead of a negative temperature. They'll always try and catch you out some way, and there'll be some other random wrong answer. So just be very, very careful. So that is how to calculate your true airspeed over 300 knots using compressibility correction. It's a very simple concept. Uh, just make sure you don't get caught out. Thanks very much. Leave any comments that you need to, and I'll see you for part seven soon.